And welcome everybody, this is Rob, and today I'm going to be doing a Let's Play, um, I guess you could call it a blind Let's Play of Final Fantasy VI for the uh, PlayStation 1. And uh, first off, it was originally released by Square in 1994, I think it was, for the Super Nintendo. Um, over here is released as Final Fantasy VI, um, but... Or, I'm sorry, Final Fantasy 3 at the time. But it was released as Final Fantasy 6 over in Japan. And uh, in 99 here, they did a, a re-release. They added in all these awesome uh, cutscenes, which you're looking at right now. So, all in all, it's uh, one of the, the best, if not the best, well, arguably the best uh, in the Final Fantasy series. So we're going to find out how well this holds up. Um, I would originally played it back in 95. Um, I, I didn't have access to a Super Nintendo. So all my games and everything I, I played on Sega Genesis. And uh, but I kept hearing so damn much about Final Fantasy. Everyone was loving this game. So um, I borrowed my sister's Super Nintendo for a Christmas vacation. And I remember in Christmas vacation, I spent like the whole two weeks just playing this game constantly. And uh, I used to rent it from, I think at the time it was Hollywood Video. I used to rent from them all the time. And uh, it just pissed me off because I made it, spoiler alert, I made it up to the part where the world ends. And I, I remember having to take the game back. And by the time I could come back and re-rent it, it was gone, and then when I finally got my hands on it, my save file was deleted. So, oh, I was so pissed. So pissed. I never did get to find out what happens. Um, I know not all the characters make it, but as to which ones, uh, I couldn't tell you. But these designs are awesome. I don't remember them being this, uh, the impressive the, the sad thing is I actually had this um, I think I think it was called like the complete collection or something like that they released this for this the PlayStation 1 and it came with Final Fantasy 5 and Final Fantasy 6 um, I almost beat Final Fantasy 5 and then I lost my save file again uh, uh, due to some error and then I had Final Fantasy VI here, and again, I made it up to the same damn part, end of the world, and lost my save file. So it seems like I was destined to never finish this damn game. But even now, these designs are still impressive. I still get that little twinge of nostalgia. That nostalgia. There. I can't talk. Because it's, um, if I remember it correctly... That's an awesome opening. Uh, the game opened up with these robot mechs just kind of walking out in the middle of a snowfield. So I guess they maybe replaced it with that. And we finally get to our title screen. Sorry about that, everyone. I just wanted to see that part because I don't think I've ever actually seen that before. We're going to go with a new game. Oh, the characters are so short and fat. I forgot about that. So it's going to be kind of a... It's going to be a blind let's play with a stroll down memory lane. Um, I don't remember half the shit that goes on in the game, so... It's been so long. It says, long ago, the war the Magi reduced the world to a scorched wasteland. And magic se simply ceased to exist. A thousand years have passed. Iron gunpowder and steam engines have been rediscovered. And high technology reigns. It's almost like a, a steampunk design there. But there are those who would enslave the world by reviving the dread destructive power known as magic. Which even these designs are still impressive. They hold up pretty well over the years. Now, could you imagine if they redid this in uh, modern graphics today?
Can it be that those in power are on the verge of repeating another, or repeating a senseless and deadly mistake? Uh, aren't they always? Something got, oh, okay, there we go. Funny, the mechs didn't quite look like that in the cutscene. There's the town. I guess uh, here's our introduction to Biggs, and I'd imagine the other guy is Wedge. Hard to believe an Esper's been found intact there, 1,000 years after the War of the Magi. I think it's still alive? Probably, judging from the urgency of our orders. And this woman, this sorceress, why is she here? I heard she fried 50 of our Magic Tech armored soldiers in under three minutes. Oh, that's impressive. Not to worry, the slave crown on her head robs her of all conscious thought. She'll follow orders. And she knows what's good for her. We'll approach from the east. Let's move out. Now, <clears throat> Matt, our other uh, commentator, I guess you could say, on uh, Fortune Dragon, he's never been able to, to beat this game either, I think. It, it passed him by back when he was little and he never got the chance to play it. And then recently he bought it on the PlayStation Network and it's just, it's aged uh, too too badly for him. He can't, he can't get through it. So in a way, this one's kind of for you, Matt. Um, you can kind of skim through the storyline. I'm going to go ahead and pass this because I do remember that, that part. I think it just kind of stretches on for minutes and minutes with nothing really happening. So Matt can finally just sit back, relax. I'll take care of all the hard work. Let's put her on point. No sense taking any risks. Forward. Oh, I gotta... Oh, yeah, that's right. No thumbstick. I gotta use the D-pad. Imperial Magic Tech armor. Not even Narsh is safe anymore. Oh, that's one of the things that sucks, though, is on the PlayStation, these, uh... Getting into battle sequence takes so damn long. It used to be instantaneous on the damn uh, fire beam. Blast them on the Super Nintendo. Which, just to give you guys a heads up, I might cut some of this. You know, cut, trim the fat. I'll do a, a, maybe leave in the important battles, but one of the things that sucks about these random attacks, who gained a level? Is that you're just trying to get from point A to point B, and you hit every single f oh, freaking stop along the way, and have to fight. It's one of the most frustrating things in the world. Excuse me. See, Narsha's freedom depends on us. Oh, dogs. Why does it always got to be dogs? And then watch, you're gonna be like gigantic warhounds. Yep. See. But you have to give it to the square, though. They've always had the coolest enemy designs. Um, or weirdest. Because, I mean, Final Fantasy VII has... You should see some crazy shit in that game. But it's funny, though, because your characters are always little short, chubby, fat guys. And then when you fight, like, Kefka and stuff later on, and all these other bad guys, they're huge, gigantic, screen-consuming monstrosities that... Just kick the shit out of you. Uh, excuse my language. Sorry, everyone. I'm not like Matt. I, I kind of just tend to curse willy-nilly. So, And yes, I did use the word willy-nilly. So, as I was saying earlier, yes, I'll trim the fat. I'll cut down a lot of the pointless battles unless... Um, you know, you guys say otherwise. If you guys want to see them, I'll leave them in. But I can imagine it'd be pretty boring seeing me doing a lot of this. And uh, I'll be doing leveling up and stuff off camera. So I don't have to bore you guys with that. And mostly stick to the story points. Um, since I'm going to be doing this blind, I'm not going to be using any kind of let... Um, let I was going to say let's play. Since I'm not going to be using any walkthroughs and stuff, I'm probably going to fuck a lot of stuff up. So you can feel free to leave comments and stuff and bitch me out about how I missed this, I missed that. But it's going to be mostly for entertainment purposes. 
You know, and that's the whole point is to spark conversation on these pincer attacks. It kind of sucks though because you can't, once you get full on magic later on, you can't hit them all, all the bad guys at once. You have to pick off one side of the screen and then go for the other. Oh, and then just hear that awesome victory sound. A victory sound from almost... I'm pretty sure almost every Final Fantasy version has had that. Even in uh, Advent Children, I think it was Tifa that had that as her ringtone. Which is pretty awesome. Ah, Tifa. Yeah, don't tell Matt or anything like that, but she's my secret girlfriend. I know that would piss him off. He'd be jealous. So we must defend the mines. Ooh, Wolfman. But yeah, I've always told Matt, or I've told Matt that I always kind of had a thing for Tifa, even back when the system, uh, when Final Fantasy VII first came out. Uh, for obvious reasons, I'll just leave it at that. Might want to heal Wedge. He's not looking too good. Damn, he wasn't doing good at all. Holy shit. Damn, these mech suits pack quite a punch. Tonic, got some gold. And uh, I think the, my first RPG, my, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this before, maybe our Final Fantasy VII videos is... Uh, ooh, something's going on. According to our source, the Frozen Esper was found in a new mine shaft. Maybe this one. Um, I first fell in love with RPGs back on, like I said, the Super Nintendo, or not Super Nintendo, the Sega Genesis. Our first save point. It's important we're going to need that. One info about save points. I think I know how it works, game. Um, so I had the Sega Genesis, and uh, I'd rented this game called Shining Force. And um, I'm like, okay, well, I used to live in a small town, and I'd kind of, my little local, we didn't have a Blockbuster. So our local store, the only thing that really I had left to rent was this RPG called Shining Force. I didn't know what it was, didn't know much about it. And uh, I tried it out and fell in love with the, the top-down, grid-based strategy RPG that it was. And... Uh, that was one that I played all, all freaking summer. I think of 90, 93 is when I played it. And, uh, or maybe 92. And it was just awesome. There was so much, uh, you got your money's worth in that one. You could play that thing for freaking days, which I did. Um, and eventually I did beat it. I finally got it for, I believe, I think I got it for Christmas one year. And played the hell out of it. And beat it. And as soon as I beat it, I was on the, the, the hunt for a new RPG that was just going to grab me. And that's when I found this. Stand back. Oh, good, good job. Oop, oop, oop. Just give me the damn Esper. Oh, listen to that boss music. Think back on our briefing. What about it? You recall hearing about a monster monster that eats lightning and stores the energy in its shell. Right, so whatever you do, don't attack the shell. All right, all right, got it. This is pretty similar to the first boss. Oh crap! 
Ah, I healed the wrong guy. Heal force. Heal him. And then you heal her. Because I have a feeling they're going to need it. See, let's hit him with a fire beam. Let's see how that works. Uh oh. Don't dis. Oh, shit. I may have made a mistake. Ah, crap. Is it going to be all of us? Nope. Just Heal him. Spent too damn. too much damn time chit chatting. Gotta wait for this bastard to come back. This is a lot like the boss in Final Fantasy VII, the, uh, the scorpion you fight at the very beginning with Barrett and Cloud, which they even tell you not to attack it while its tail is up, I think it is. Welcome back. Now, you're gonna get blasted in the face. Best to wait it out in case he disappears again. Uh, uh, see, there he goes. Might as well heal up everyone. I'm gonna have to wait for him to come back. Right, come on. Just put it on defend. Alright, you don't got all day. Get your ass out. Alright, let's go. And see, I have a feeling along the way I'm going to be making some terrible damn mistakes. Because you know these bosses can take freaking forever. So, I may even cut some of those fights down. Um, and I know there's really awesome, like, if you mix an item with a certain, you know, um accessory and stuff like that you can get like really awesome results unfortunately i don't remember any of those i know you can do yeah, for some reason the, the term x death comes to mind i keep hearing that talked about a lot um i used to have an old issue of nintendo power that had a walkthrough for this um the only thing that sucks though it was only for the second half of the game i didn't have it for the first half so it kind of I had missed a lot of stuff. Come on, let's end this already. Got some story I want to get to here. First episode, I would like for some stuff to happen. See, there it goes. And I think one of the funny things, though, is you, they show her here <clears throat> with green hair for her character model, but in the cutscenes and everything, and I think in even all the story art, you see that she actually has blonde hair. But I think it's an, another character you bump into later on. She has blonde hair, so to avoid confusion, they uh, they give her green to kind of separate them. Easy enough, even with my little snap food there and screwing up and hitting the shell.
Jesus. Okay, sorry about that everybody. I did a quick little cut there so I could run back and save it. And of course I got into like 16 battles along the way just because I wanted to save it. It was right there. Okay, well maybe not 16, but maybe I exaggerate a little bit. And there is our Esper. Looks like some kind of bird frozen in ice. Something's going on. What, what's the matter? Do you know something we don't? Uh oh. Frozen creature began emitting an eerie light. Where's that light coming from? Uh-oh. Uh yeah, what the hell is happening? Ah, ellipses. Okay, I guess she's had some kind of reaction to it. Okay, well on that note, I guess that's going to be a good stopping point. We'll go ahead and find out what happens to this mystery woman in the next episode. So be sure to join me guys on the next one. Uh, be sure to sh share, comment, subscribe. And this is Rob signing off. I'll see you on the next one.